Embryonic stem cells have the ability to become any cell type in the human body. The potential of stem cells to replace damaged or diseased cells is what makes stem cell research so intriguing. To collect embryonic stem cells, scientists first start with an IVF embryo, which is no longer required for treatment and would otherwise be discarded, and has been specifically donated to research with full consent from the donor. At this stage of development, usually around five to seven days after fertilization, the embryo is a hollow ball of about 200 to 250 cells. It's no bigger than a pinhead and is called a blastocyst. All research on human embryos requires a license under Australian legislation and it's illegal to conduct any type of research on a human embryo that has been conceived naturally. Stem cells exist in the inner cell mass of the blastocyst. To access this area, scientists dissolve or remove the outer layer of cells. The inner cell mass is then placed on a layer of support cells and allowed to grow in the laboratory. The support cells, or feeder layer, produce factors necessary for embryonic stem cells to grow. Once the inner cell mass cells are harvested, they can be used to create stem cell lines. Stem cell lines are cell cultures that can be grown indefinitely in the laboratory and distributed to scientists for research. It takes up to a week to develop a colony and considerable amount of skill and care to keep the colony growing. Embryonic stem cell lines have the ability to keep dividing in the laboratory. They can be frozen and distributed to researchers around the world and in the future for the production of cells for cell-based therapies. The ability of embryonic stem cell lines to keep dividing is why they are often given the term immortal. This is the most unique characteristic of embryonic stem cells. Another unique characteristic of embryonic stem cells is their ability to become any cell type of the body, a process known as differentiation. To understand this further, we can see an embryonic stem cell colony under the microscope growing over a five-day period. In this small amount of time, the colony can increase from approximately 100 stem cells to over 5,000 cells. Every single one of these colonies is then manually sliced up and simply placed in another feeder layer to allow it to grow, like taking a cutting from a plant. The middle growth button is first removed and then the rest of the colony is delicately divided up and lifted onto another feeder layer. Over time, this means that a huge number of stem cells can be cultivated and used in research. The immortality of embryonic stem cells and their ability to turn into any cell type gives them a huge amount of potential to be used to treat and cure diseases. In comparison, adult stem cells have a more limited capacity to divide and are more restricted in their growth. They are fewer in number and harder to isolate and identify at this stage. The current hurdles faced by researchers using embryonic stem cells relate to concerns regarding the stability of embryonic stem cells and also the ability to create pure populations of cells. For example, if a patient requires new kidney cells, the cells need to be a pure population of kidney cells, not any other cell type. However, with every new advance in stem cell research, the ability of organisations like the Australian Stem Cell Centre to improve the lives of people suffering from disease and injury becomes closer every day.